Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about a druid leveling build specifically catered to leveling in the Helltide. This is going to be a popular choice for a lot of players this season, including myself. And I'm going to share with you what I've been using for a build so far. And again, I've really designed this to work very effectively for all the monsters within the Helltide. It is capable of clearing dungeons as well if you want to go out and get some glyphs that you may not have had any luck to pick up. But it's specifically designed to kind of clear out the enemies here and have enough damage to actually take out the elites within it as well. First thing I want to talk about here is actually one of the skills that's been redesigned this season. This is going to be Quick Shift. When shape shifting into a new animal form, you're going to deal 5 times multiplicative increased damage for 8 seconds. That's a really long duration in this game, and this actually stacks. You can actually get 6 stacks of this. Now here's the Quick Shift stacks right here. You can see I've got 2, and as soon as I gain another one, not only do I get the increased stack, but the duration of the existing stacks is increased as well or refreshed rather. So this is really important because this makes it incredibly easy to keep these stacks active whenever you're in combat, provided you're constantly shapeshifting. And real quickly, I just want to reference this tooltip again. It's when shapeshifting into a new animal form. We can easily do this with the setup that we have by using claw as our default skill or our generator skill all the way up top. This will turn us into a werewolf and then we can use pulverize to turn ourselves into a werebear. Again, 8 seconds is a really long duration in this game, at least in my opinion. That gives you plenty of time to refresh these stacks, keep your character alive, and you can easily get this stacked up to max and basically take advantage of that however you like and often as possible. This is essentially a generator spender build in which we're using Claw in order to generate our spirit and then we're going to use Pulverize to spend it. Just with the added advantage, we're now getting a huge chunk of multiplicative damage really early on in the leveling process, which we otherwise wouldn't have had previously. We're going to use a couple of other really strong leveling skills. Poison Creeper is always tremendous for leveling. It does an enormous amount of damage, especially early on in this game. And we're also going to use Rabies. This is another strong skill, at least as of last season. But not everybody got a chance to try that as they quickly quit the season or didn't take at all. For the leveling process, if you're choosing to go in Helltide, this is essentially as difficult as it gets. These enemies are fairly tanky and they seem to do a lot of damage, at least when you first enter a new world tier. This character's essentially just entered World Tier 3 rather recently. The advantages of leveling in Helltide is there just seems to be endless amounts of mobs coming your way. Now, obviously that's true with the Helltide of any season, but in this season, the density has really been ramped up. As you can see, we haven't really gone very far and there's just enormous amounts of enemies coming at us constantly. So we do need to be fairly safe and make sure that we're kiting around. And that's why Rabies and Poison Creeper are so effective. It allows us to get some damage over time on the enemies, just spread it around, kill a lot of the trash out, that way we can remain safe and line up those pulverizes in order to do maximum damage. You can all see the advantages of Helltide as well in terms of resources. There's a bunch of Veiled Crystals, you'll have plenty of herbs in order to level your potions up, and there's an enormous amount of legendaries to be had here as well. This is the only method I've leveled a character so far in this season. Of course, it's early on, it's just a couple days in, but I absolutely wouldn't do the next character in any different fashion. Now, if you're thinking that you might get bored of Helltide, well, you can look at the clips in this video. I have been in non-stop combat for the entire duration so far, and these mobs are just gonna continue coming. So definitely an effective way, it's engaging, and you need to really be active in order to keep your character alive. If you're looking for passive leveling, this is probably not the way to go for you, at least in this season. We'll go through the entire skill tree in just a minute here, but I wanna mention that we are running Earth and Bulwark. You don't necessarily need this in the lower world tiers, but you'll wanna pick that up in order to have the unstoppable as you get higher, especially once you get into world tier three. As mentioned, this is essentially a generator spender, but with a couple of twists. We're gonna use rabies and we're gonna use poison creeper whenever they're off cooldown, whether it's single target or even multi-target. Now, if you have a single low life enemy, you of course don't need to use them and you can save them for a larger pack. Now, I do want to make mention that I'm playing this on soft core. In fact, if you're watching the number of cinders I have, I've actually died here. And there's just a number of mobs being spawned nonstop, strong elites dealing tons of damage all over the place. I have not played hardcore in this particular season. I don't know if this build is even viable there. I don't imagine that players are just chain spawning some of the elites here, at least at this pace on hardcore. So it's probably a fair bit safer there. But again, just use that at your own risk. Looks like we have a second of reprieve, provided I actually dodge some enemies here. And what's going on here is we're actually acquiring baneful hearts, and you'll get these just going through the Helltide. We've got 26 here that you can see at the moment, and you can use one at these altars. Upon using three for the three altars, it'll actually summon these elites. Players are just repeatedly doing this over and over in small groups, whether partied or not, and just getting enormous amounts of experience, drops, and so forth. So absolutely fantastic way to level this season moved away a little bit just to slow things down in order to help explain the build you'll see poison creeper does an enormous amount of damage all i've done there is cast poison creeper that doesn't benefit from the quick shift because it's not an animal form but it still does a large amount of damage 
You also have Rabies, which will proc that Quick Shift stack. And you can follow that up with a Pulverize in order to further that damage as well. Lots of sustain in terms of being able to just continue your rotation, whether that's just using the Generator Claw and then following up with Pulverize, we're using rabies off cooldown, and there's a new aspect from last season that'll actually help benefit us as well. Virulent aspect, we'll of course go through all the aspects, but this is the new one in case you didn't play in season three. When rabies infects an enemy, it's gonna reduce the cooldown, and it's actually tripled when infecting elite enemies. You can often spam this ability, and it's a really strong leveling ability as well. If you just want to meander through the Helltide, you can do that as well. This build is gonna be extremely effective at that, and that's essentially what it had in mind. And I was actually surprised at how many people were chain spawning some of these elites, but the build being able to take those down as well was just a nice surprise or addition to that as well. But you can take down anything that you might encounter in the Helltide. So you can just generate your cinders as normal, look for chests. Looks like there's one actually just above me here. We'll grab one more cinder and you can go through and just do the Helltide like this as well, grabbing a number of resources. As mentioned, you'll be able to level your potion, which is nice. In the past, that has been kind of an issue for some people collecting enough resources. But in general, you're going to be stacked with resources, getting plenty of experience. Of course, can open the chest as you get the resources, and everything is pretty much fair game in here. Helltide's been an excellent choice, and as I said, I wouldn't do it any other way, even if I made a second character, which I'll likely do later on. That's essentially the foundation of the synergy within the build, but I do want to go ahead and cover all this because this is really a different build than a lot of players will have seen at this point. And I did cover a very similar build last season, but again, since that season was so unpopular, this is likely new for many of the viewers. So we'll be taking Claw, and we're just going to put a second point here, which gives us Enhanced Claw, which will increase the attack speed. Claw is going to turn us into a Werewolf. Later on, by switching between Werewolf and Werebear, we're going to get increased damage. We're going to max Pulverize. This is going to be one of our main damage skills. And again, since we're getting that increased damage, adding to the top end of this by adding ranks into this ability is going to further that damage. You'll want to take the Enhanced Pulverize, just allowing us to overpower more frequently, and having Primal Pulverize enemies hit by Pulverize will deal reduced damage. There's a lot of enemies and a lot of damage going on in this Helltide. This is really beneficial. You may find the crowd control a little bit more effective. However, we don't quite have as many overpowers or the frequency of overpowering that we would like to really keep this active. One point into Earth and Bulwark. You can disregard this until you get to World Tier 3 if you like. If you're playing hardcore, I would strongly recommend it prior to that. But giving yourself the Unstoppable by World Tier 3 is pretty much mandatory in order to survive the number of elites with different affixes. The Unstoppable effect is of course gained from adding the second point in, so make sure you're aware of that and don't just slap one point here and ignore the rest of the tree. The final node, Preserving Earth and Bulwark, is going to give you 18% of your maximum life as Fortify. Now we've had item reworks, right? This is Loot Reborn. So we need to talk about this because depending on where you are or what you're stacking on the affixes of your gear, 20%, which I'm rounding the number here just to make math easy, of say 2000 life is going to be 400 life, okay, or 400 protection that we're getting from that ability. So if your life pool is smaller, you're not going to get as big of a benefit and you may not want to actually put that extra point there and you can decide to put that somewhere else. And you can pretty much get maximum life on a number of pieces of gear here. It's just a matter of what you're choosing to stack. We're not going to go super in depth, but we will talk about some of the better affixes. Maximum life is pretty good, but there's also life regen, which has really been added to a number of pieces, and you may decide to go that route as well. So just be aware of that when you invest into this and make sure it's something that you want. Otherwise, place the point elsewhere. We are going to pick up Cyclone Armor, one point in this as well. It's essentially just to give us the 10% non-physical damage reduction. As you saw, there's just damage everywhere. I even died while recording this video just from the number of elites being spawning. AoE going around and trying to show off different things, talking about the build during the time. Enhanced Cyclone Armor, when you activate this, this will actually knock the enemies back. Really good survival tool, really like having the point there, and it leads us up to preserving Cyclone Armor. Every 10 seconds, you're actually going to get 30% damage reduction for 2 seconds. Again, this is just massive amounts of damage going on. Ancestral Fortitude, going to increase your non-physical resistances by another 15%. This is a really good boost. We can get a lot of passive non-physical resistance for this character, which will help us push to higher world tiers, get more experience, and get better items faster. Poison Creeper, we're going to max with five points here. Again, we want to increase the top end of this damage. Poison Creeper is one of the best leveling skills for the Druid, in my opinion. It's a huge range AoE, does tons of damage, does fairly quickly as well. Call of the Wild is going to increase that companion bonus by 36% multiplicative, so definitely worth picking that up as well, just because it synergizes so well with Poison Creeper. Poison Creeper's immobilized duration increase, kind of a no-brainer, just going to allow you to stay safer and increasing the active duration by 3 seconds is going to allow all of this to deal more damage, keep your character safer. 
Clarity is also really useful for this build. Even though we run just one companion, when we use our Poison Creeper, that's going to allow our Pulverize, if used after, to have increased damage and critical strike chance. Just synergizes really well. Three points into Crushing Earth. As mentioned, the multiplicative damage. This synergizes well with the aspect of the Quick Stand. It even synergizes well with Neurotoxin. All this kind of works together. Keep the enemies slowed. Allow your Pulverize to deal more damage through the massive AOE range that it has. For Rabies, we're just going to put a single point. It's really good skill in terms of a one point investment. However, the scaling of this is nowhere near what Poison Creeper has or even Pulverize. So keep that in mind. We just want the one point so we can spam this ability, keep poison up on enemies. This will take out all the low health or weaker enemies really easy. And then you can just use it on the next pack. Essentially, if we're looking to take out high health targets, we're going to be relying on Poison Creeper and just Pulverizing over and over in order to do so. Enhanced Rabies, we need to take this. It's going to deal increased bonus damage, which of course is nice, but we need to take that in order to get Natural Rabies, which allows us to spread even faster. So not only can we use the skill more often, but it will spread faster and just apply these debuffs to everything around. Before we talk about the next couple of skills, I want to mention Aspect of the Earth Sign Horror, and a little bit of this might be covered behind me, but this is going to allow Pulverize to become an Earth skill, which also makes this a Nature skill, and this is what's going to set us up to synergize for the next couple of talent points. That means the trio of skills here, Defiance, Circle of Life, and Resonance, which all involve nature magic skills, will be able to be benefited from. It's going to allow us to get 12% multiplicative damage to elites. We're going to heal for 3% of our damage every time we use Pulverize because it costs spirit. And the nature magic skills are going to deal increased damage, and this bonus will be tripled if it's used after a storm skill. That means that even while bossing, if we don't want to knock anything back, we can actually just use the active ability on Cyclone Armor, since it's a storm skill, and follow up with a Pulverize, especially if we know there's an overpower coming. Quick shift, we talked about towards the intro of the video, we're getting a massive amount of damage by switching between Rabies or Claw, and then into Pulverize. We also have the ability to take Heightened Senses, which is going to give us additional damage reduction when shifting into Werebear form, an additional movement speed when going into Werewolf. For the key passive, we'll be running Earth Sign Strength. This can give us additional maximum life. If you're not stacking life and choosing to go with something like life per second, you may find another key passive more useful. However, in addition to that, while healthy, which will often be, we're gonna deal increased damage and the additional increased overpower damage is really nice for one-shotting elites and often you'll just one-shot the entire pack with them. Let's go ahead and jump into the aspects of this point. I do have two uniques equipped. They are not required by any means. We'll talk about those as well, just so you know what they are and keep an eye out for them. They do benefit the build, which is why I have them equipped. There's a number of aspects that are gonna be highly beneficial to the build, and I wanna make sure that we cover those. And a lot of the other items can be kind of loosely slotted if in the meantime. Don't need to be perfectly min-maxed, at least for the leveling process, especially in Helltide. So first up in the chest slot, I have Insatiable Fury. Essentially, I've got this equipped because it gives plus three to Pulverize, just increasing the damage output that that's going to do. The additional armor and werebear form has also been very nice since there's tons of damage going out in the Helltide. Hunter Zenith in the ring slot is because of the plus two to quick shift that it has. I'm not sure I would have used this if it only rolled plus one, to tell you the truth, but this is a skill that I've talked about in the skill tree multiple times at this point, right? Getting a ton of benefit. Claws in animal form. Pulverizes an animal form, and even rabies counts as the werewolf form. So you can alternate between those in order to stack that up. You can essentially keep those stacks at maximum. Just multiplicative damage or this early on is huge. Next up is aspect of quicksand. I've slapped these on my gloves. You can put this in a number of places. Again, for the leveling process, not extremely important where you put everything. One thing I'm really concerned about at this point is where the weapon is, and we'll talk about that in a second. Since we have Shockwave Aspect on the weapon, which is where I would recommend putting that for the benefit or the bonus that that gets, our Pulverize is going to travel a long distance. That means essentially everything that we touch is going to be slowed. That allows us to take advantage of Crushing Earth. This gives us 15% multiplicative damage, and we've easily stacked this pretty high already, just talking about a couple of the skill tree points, right? At this point, we're getting 30% multiplicative damage from Quick Shift, 15% from Crushing Earth, and we're just in the middle of the leveling process. Virulent Aspect, which we talked about, this is going to allow Rabies to spread more often. We can also get some benefits from enemies being poisoned. Neurotoxin causes poisoned enemies to be slowed, and that synergizes with Crushing Earth as well. Our Earth skills are going to deal additional damage just because the enemy's poisoned now. For Spirit Boons, there's a little deviation that you could go, but these are fairly standard, at least in terms of pulverized builds. We're going to be running Wariness for reduced damage from elites. We'll use the Eagle as our actual boon animal. We're going to get 5% increased critical strike chance. 30% increased critical strike damage. We'll later on take 15% fortify whenever you use a defensive skill. It just allows a little bit more survivability whenever you pop your unstoppable in the way of Earth and Bulwark. 
and obsidian slam to round it out and that's going to cause every 20th kill to cause the next skill to overpower overpower is just really strong for pulverized builds in general i also want to mention that i have not fully completed the seasonal quest line at this point but i've had no difficulty using this build in there again it has a lot of aoe clear ability and it does decent on single target is it the greatest single target build no it's not but this works really well in the helltide which is designed for has the ability to get through the seasonal quest as well I plan to run this build up to 100 or very close in which I may transition into an end game build or even a variation of this if it seems like it's going to push a little bit further. Hope you enjoy the build. It's a fantastic choice if you're choosing to level through the Helltides and it works in other areas as well. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.